Yes. I've really just been finding the dopest people and just interviewing. You know, like some people, they'll Welcome take... Welcome to the Dopest People <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> some people will take like months to figure, I don't got the name yet, but I just figure we just get the work done. So right. uh, for this podcast, we have a fitting guest, Mr. Jay Morrison. What's going on, man? Nice, King. Peace. How are you? Man, I'm blessed, brother. Blessed. So Me too. You are you everywhere, first off. You own okay. half of it later, right? <laughs> um, but I really want to... I really want to get into your story first and then start teaching these principles. But what were you doing before you started selling? You started getting into the real estate game. Right. So prior to me entering the real estate industry, I was on the corner of 10th and Springfield in North New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I was on the highways, Turnpike South, 95 South. And I was a 10 year dope boy. Mm -hmm. I was a drug dealer. I was a hustler. Um, that was my career path that I chose at 15, 16 years old, and I pursued that for about 10 years. So how did you get into that? Like, what did you see to say, yo, I need to do that? Well, growing up in poverty, growing up with a lot of um, adversity in my home, and really having like, you know, people like grow up in poverty, right? And they have adversity. But I remember from the time I was like seven years old, I had like a burning desire, like, yo, I'm not with this. <laughs> like, yo, I'm not with these free lunch tickets in school. Right. I'm not with these food stamps. Mm -hmm. I'm not with, you know, eat these pancakes every night, just, just add water pancakes. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not. And so when I got to an age where I could do something about it, and I started seeing some of my cousins um, who were a little older than me and, and others in my, my, my neighborhood community, I start seeing a little, little, little gold bracelet, a little, little chain, a little, right. little, little new Tommy Hilfiger outfit, a little, you know. And I'm like, man, I'm over here. I got literally two, three pair of jeans, mm -hmm. hand-me-down corduroys. I remember I had the, I had the ugly clothes. Like mm -hmm. when everybody's rocking Tims, I had a black pair of low-top Tims from like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> the, the, the clearance, the clearance rack joints. And I'm like, man, why can't I have the, the, the real Tims? Oh, you know what I'm saying? You get the high tops, you yeah. get the low. <laughs> so. Um, at 15, when I saw an opportunity for me to, you know, and actually in my town, Som Somerville, New Jersey, I'd be playing basketball, walking from the basketball court, just being a teenager. Mm. And someone would come up to me like, yo, what you got? What you got? Y'all got $50. Yo, what you got? I got $100. And I wasn't even hustling. I didn't even look like a drug dealer. Right. But I'm counting like y'all could have made $300 today. Mm. And so I'm counting the money I could have made if I had access to the inventory right. and the product. Right. And when, you know, one of my cousins, um, you know, we had that conversation and he was like, all right, you want to hustle? Like, here you go. Here's a hundred pack, bring, bring back 60. Mm. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to take, shoot my shot. And, you know, I come from a family, unfortunately, where we weren't handed down financial principles. My mom was a ex drug dealer. Mm. My stepfather, drug dealer. All ran in the family. Stick up kid. My grandfather was a drug dealer. Wow. You know, and that's, that's typical or, or you'll find that a lot in, you know, urban communities or in the hood where everybody get it how they live. Right. And so, uh, yeah, that's how I entered that, that particular how, game. How could you have gone a different route? I mean, like, I go to a school and the kids, the teachers are t telling the kids, hey, you don't need to sell drugs, don't join a gang, right? Mm -hmm. But you look at the teacher and the kid's like, I don't really want to be like you. I want to be like my man out there, right? So the teachers can't really offer a better solution, right? Correct. What type of situation could have happened where they actually get a different chance? Because it seems like you don't even have a chance. Like, you don't have a chance to do something else. What do you think could have happened or what could have been in place? Well, the something else is are limited, right? So it's a rapper, it's a ball player, it's an entertainer or it's a drug dealer, what we often see. And so what could have been in place are mentorship programs mm -hmm. and exposure programs to see that, yo, it's young businessmen out here look just like you yeah. who the rapper is getting advice from. Yeah. Who drive the same cars, who got the same kind of bank, who got the same, right? And so if I would have saw that, what I could, you know, at 15, 16, 17 years old, um, I didn't even think it was an opportunity for me to, right. what, what is being a businessman? What the hell is being a businessman? What, right. what, what's that look like? What is being a landlord, a, 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 a real estate mogul or fund manager? Those aren't how we see ourselves reflected. Right. And so if, if I would have saw someone besides my uncles and cousins who played basketball and were successful, 
uh, which was my first hoop dream, mm -hmm. um, or just Jay-Z or Biggie Smalls or whoever was rapping at the time, if I would have saw, like, yo, you could take your smarts, your energy, your, your charisma, you could dress nice, you could be swaggy, you could right. have a fine lady, you could, you know, have the, the, the things you aspire to have, but do it just using your intellect mm -hmm. and your hustle, that definitely could have gave and would have probably opened up other doors for me to pursue different kinds of, because selling drugs is just entrepreneurship. Right, oh, for sure. And so that was the most relatable uh, vehicle of entrepreneurship that I saw. And I didn't see, I never, I mean, I saw people that own barbershops, might have been store owners, mm -hmm. but they didn't seem like they have the, the revenue or income right. or, or assets or trinkets that we want. Mm -hmm. So I think the exposure to seeing successful businessmen and women could have helped me see myself in a different light and, and change course. I love it. So we're, we're actually trying to build entrepreneurial colleges for kids. In the last couple of years, I've been running what's called the Black Wall Street High School Tour. Nice. Where I bring black business owners to the schools to talk to kids about entrepreneurship. And every month, this, uh, my man, shout out to my man, Big Ray. Uh, he sponsored me coming out to LA every single month. And we have these wristbands where we tell the kids, come up with a cool name for a wristband. We pair them with a mentor, you get $100 worth of wristbands, would it be 300 wristbands, they could turn it into 600. Um, but their first goal is to learn how to tell the story, how to build a business, how to get people, how to make a sale, yeah. right? And we're just trying to give people another avenue because like you didn't have one, right? right? So being in the game, in the drug game, right? In my mind, I'm thinking, yo, if I'm making $3,000 a week, $5,000 a week, $20,000 a week. I'm going to take that money. I'm going to buy some houses or something, right? Right. But for 10 years you was in it, why did you stay so long? You know, the Greek philosopher Jay-Z said, in this game we got valleys and peaks, mm -hmm. right? So you find yourself making that three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a week. You're stacking up money. But, again, most of... You're starting from an inner city and urban environment. You're competing with friends. You're competing with, and, and I was never flashy in the beginning. So, you know, I have a white t-shirt on, a shoestring on my neck with my, my, my safe key on it. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing gaudy and flashy. But the average person in a drug game, you're competing with pop culture. You want to look the lifestyle. You're competing with rappers. And you're, you come from poverty. And so, well, you know, when you grew up with holes in your zapper toes, you celebrate the minute when you have in dough, <laughs> right? So you coming from poverty, and you only could have two pair of pants, three right. shirts, but now you got $2,000, $3,000 in your pocket at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy me some clothes. All day. Right? I'm going to buy me what I, what I didn't have. And so you can get caught up in that lifestyle. You're not thinking about your exit strategy or, or uh, the going gets so good, it seems so easy and so correct. You think you can outsmart the system. Um, or then someone on your team gets locked up. You got to bail them out. You mm -hmm. might get locked up. Right? And so through these valleys and peaks, you'll be up 50, 100. $200,000, you take one hit on a trip, mm -hmm. now you back down, you know what I mean? You gotta hustle back up. And so right. it's so inconsistent and volatile, the drug game. Um, that's one reason why it's so hard to just simply exit. Second, you come addicted like the customers you're used to serving. And right. so you love the rush, you love the, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like what, love it. it's like what keeps us excited as entrepreneurs. Like why do you continue to do you know what you're doing, right? It's like you love it, like you love this content stuff, yeah. like. And so, humans, we have a competitive, you know, and entrepreneurs and, and, and alphas, we have a competitive nature. So, as it's like cops and robbers, mm -hmm. it's like you're beating the system. It's like you know, yeah. it gets addictive, figuring out, and you know, you think about that exit strategy. But for me, what got hard was, okay, I grew up poor my whole life. I found my way to where at 17 years old, you know, um you know, doing over a quarter million dollars a year. Mm. And I'm like family and friends, and even after I went to prison at 18 years old, facing three years of life in prison, mm. even when my mom and my, my daughter's mother are crying and begging me to stop hustling, I say, well, you tell me what I can do to make this same kind of money, and I'll stop. No answers. Until then, <laughs> we're gonna be in the right. kitchen on the stove, we're gonna cook it up, and we're gonna make it happen. So, right. you know, again, exposure, opportunities, uh, there definitely is this competitive edge to it. For, for a lot of times, it was hard for me to leave the game because um, you know, I'm, a, I'm a CEO at heart. I'm a visionary. Mm -hmm. And so when you envision yourself being this drug kingpin, you envision yourself being successful, you envision yourself whatever, even though you're risking your freedom and your life, the immaturity in you, uh, all of what media blitzes you with, right? Mm -hmm. that culture, that environment. See, us being in this space, 
it looks a little different from the outside in. Mm -hmm. But when all day, every day, everybody around you, this is what you do. This is a lifestyle. Like, so, like, like when you really knee deep in the game, it's like people had an issue with me going to the Trap Museum, the Trap Music Museum that T.I. just launched. Shout out to Tip. Album out right now, Dime Trap. <laughs> right? They're like, Jay, how could you be in, a, in the, the Trap Music Museum? And they got crack and they, they, they're, they're glorifying the drug lifestyle and the culture. And I said it was a genius idea, I thought, the way he documented the, the, the trap culture. What people don't understand is that if you don't come from, it's like when you go to college, you're proud of your college. Mm -hmm. You're proud of your fraternity. You're mm -hmm. proud of, you know, SU or MU or HU or whatever your university is. So when you come from the streets, as wrong as we know it is, but this was your fraternity, this was your lifestyle, like this was your, your every day, there's a sense of um, false pride, even if you will, but there's definitely a sense of, uh, it's, it's your journey, it's your story, yeah. it's what you relate to the most. And right. so it's really hard to leave as a creature of habit. You want me to go into the business world where that's not guaranteed, where that's new, where I don't know these big words, where I gotta dress differently. Right. <laughs> I got, you want me to try all of that where I understand grams and I understand right. ounces and I understand, you know, so it's right. a different culture. And that, that culture could be shocking and, and could be quite scary, honestly. Gotcha, gotcha. So going towards the, the nine, ten years of you in the game, how did you get out? Like, do you remember the moment where your mind changed? Like, yo, I don't really need to do all this. Yeah, I do. I remember it vividly. Um, and Tosin, real quick, when that thing gets to like 25, just hit start, stop again, and then hit it again. Yep. yep. So yeah, um, it was approaching 25 years old. And at that time I'd had racked up three felonies, served two and a half years in prison. Wow. Um, had different quote unquote successes as a, as a drug dealer, had a major operation that I was proud of. I mean, it was very systemized, wow, and very wow. operationalized. Oh yeah, rap uh, music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got battle scars. Right. And, but I was saying to myself, all right, you're so bright. Right, you're so talented. You the man, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you that guy. And, and, you, and are you truly a hustler though? Mm -hmm. Because if you're truly a hustler, you should be able to hustle anything. Only a drug dealer could just sell drugs. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that I was undervaluing my potential and my talent. And secondly, I was asking myself, you know, where am I gonna be when I'm 30? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've already saw that at any minute someone could tell on you, you could, I mean, the, 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 the screwed up part about the trap, the, the drug trap, is that there's different traps. There's a corporate trap, there's a college oh, trap, dead. there's the corner trap, right? Mm -hmm. So the screwed up part about the corner trap is that you could be doing everything perfectly. This is what my, my awakening was. I had this operation where I would give this queen, this young girl who was my, my, my mule, I guess you would call, or my ride or die, mm -hmm. I'd give her my money, she'd go to Yonkers, she'd get my product, mm -hmm. she'd take that product to a stash house in Irvington, New Jersey with her friend, they had a studio room where they would blend our coke down and compress it and do what they do. They'll take it down to Maryland. They'd drop it off, get the money, and bring it back. I never seen anything but money. Yeah, you had a whole assembly line. Assembly line. <laughs> in that, one of our contacts down in Maryland from D.C., who I didn't know, caught a gun charge. Mm -hmm. He tells the government that, hey, don't don't stick me with this gun charge. I know when the work is coming. <laughs> oh, shoot. So on one of her trips down to Maryland, she gets pulled over. And who she was meeting gets pulled over. They get incarcerated with um, 700 grams of coke and five pounds of weed. Whoa. And so part of this awakening was we end up beating that charge on a legal search and seizure. The cops illegally searched the vehicle. Thank God. She could have told on me, and as a three-time felon, I would have been, there's no right. Jay Morrison brand. There's no Tulsa Fun. There's no Jay Morrison Academy. Mm. We ain't even having this conversation. Right. She didn't tell. We went to court. We beat it. But my point is, I had to reflect and say, you could do everything perfect in this game. Mm. But the consequences are so high that if one chink in the armor is off, one person tells, one person says, I think he did this, you could literally be spending the next 10 to 15 to 30 years in prison, mm. showering with men, going to bed at 10 o'clock, working for 30 cents a day. Wow. 
And I had to ask myself, are you willing to risk that outcome because you're, you're stuck selling drugs and you refuse to take your talent somewhere else to hustle something else yeah. that doesn't have these consequences? Wow. I'm in North New Jersey hustling with Bloods and Crips. The kings that I'm hustling with, these guys are real killers. Are you willing to continue to be at the top of the food chain to everyone else around you at any given day could be starving or hungry enough to take you out in order to take what you have? Mm -hmm. And so the consequences of that drug game were just becoming too high for the fact that when I looked at it, I believed there was an opportunity for me to take my talents and my gifts and my potential somewhere else where there's less risk, yeah. but still some rewards. And I had been introduced at that point to real estate and saw that through real estate investing, I could make, if not the same amount close to it, or maybe even more mm -hmm. in real estate as an investor, if I would give real estate investing the same energy right. that I gave the corner and the trap. Wow. And so that was my awakening approach at 25 years old in I think 2004, 2005. And um, I walked away that day. Really? I didn't, I had some product left. I gave it away. I told my partners, it's a wrap. I had my trap phone. I, I cracked it. And I literally wow. cold turkey just that day, walked away from the dope game, called an a, a old mentor I had up. He allowed me to come work in his mortgage company, got my mortgage license, mm. got my first two family home, 100% financing, two family of four acres of land, got into my second multifamily. Uh, some flips, got my real estate license when I saw the commissions the realtors were making. I was wow. closing my own deals as a mortgage professional, as a real estate agent, and as an investor. Wow. Uh, ended up making my first million in three years in the real estate industry. Goodness gracious. It's my real life. That's crazy. Yo, I think this really just solidifies the fact that people really should follow you because you're not just talking about it or it's not like you put your toe in the water like, oh, let me get this little house, see how it works. Like, you really... Push all your chips in the middle of the table, said, I'm all in. I'm all in, back against the wall. And, and I literally worked six months in the mortgage industry on a co purely commissioned job. Closed one deal, made 2500 had spent all my money, went broke. I was driving a 93 Mercury Grand Marquis with a rag top, driver's side door handle missing, mm. shoestring holding my glove compartment together, and I used to play Young Jeezy Thug Motivation on a way to work every morning on a portable DVD player because my car had no CD player. <laughs> That's a shock though, right? Like to go from like, yo, I can buy whatever I want to that, humbling. Humbling, bro. And so I, don't, I have a very low tolerance for those, like I didn't take drug money and then flip that and become this millionaire. No, right. I went broke, bro. I'm talking about parking my car around the corner and then walking to clients' houses. Wow. But I grinded. I believed in myself. I, I saw the potential in this industry and in real estate and in business and in mortgages and finance. No college education. 11th, I'm 11th grade high school dropout. Wow. Went back in the 12th grade to the TOPS program, like the graduate off the Bass Kids program. But the point is, is I truly believe in the potential of people. Mm -hmm. Like I really believe in the potential. You focus and you harness your energy and your discipline. I wasn't going to parties. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't going to clubs. I was locked in mm. because I understood that if this, if I didn't make this work, you know what I had to go back to? <laughs> With a seven-year-old daughter, and I gotta risk her daddy being in prison for the rest of his uh, life. That's all I knew. Mm -hmm. If I didn't make real estate work, all I had to fall back on was a career in a trap. Wow. And I couldn't make that my life. So uh, you have, you've had documented success. And I believe you're not a leader until you create one. So who was your first testimony of someone you like pulled up? Now, obviously I've seen some it's here today. Shouts out to Tosa. Tosa. <laughs> what, who was the first person you, you gave the blueprint to, they followed it and they won? Oh, uh, there's actually a king by the name. There's a couple of guys off, off the block that I brought into real estate. They had some flips and had some success, but then they would like take their money and go back to the streets. Right, so it's so hard to leave the streets alone. <laughs> right. I would bring people in off the streets into real estate, and then they just figure out ways to, to leverage real estate to buy more drugs. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. But um, one of my one of my first success stories is in 2005, 2006. I had a king by the name of Ivan Ivan Lee Jackson. Mm -hmm. I was coming out of, of a parole program. You know, he had the corn rolls, do rag on with the fitted, and all that, and um, was introduced through two mutual friends. 
and I brought him under my wing as a mentee. And he literally made uh, maybe 60000 his first year with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but to date now, he's built multi-million dollar companies. Wow. Um, just got it. Got the blueprint, dove in, followed the example. And there was, was others to follow. And then as we started our school, the Jay Morrison Academy, about four years ago, one of my partners now, Will Roundtree, uh, who's author of Credit is King, He's a co-founder and partner of mine on our easy funding, business funding platform uh, in the Jay Morrison Academy. He came in as an online student mm. and learned about not just real estate. He's built a nice real estate portfolio for himself, but learned about business strategies and branding and operations and systems. And Will's built a multi-million dollar company in the last three years wow. um, as well. Will is Brandon, Brandon Wigley, another really successful student. Uh, came in, Isaac Grace, another successful Verlana McClinton, single mom out of Detroit, closed 40 deals in the last three years um, as a single wow. mom and salon owner right there in Detroit. So there's been tons of success stories. I agree with you. Like, you ain't really a king unless you're a king maker. Yeah, absolutely. Or queen maker. So, and I got to ask you, man, why do you think the same people that you're trying to help and educate and empower hate on you? Which is, it's the weirdest thing. It's, like, it's, yo, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, and it, here's the thing. If you weren't doing anything, they wouldn't have anything to say. Right? I'm talking about, like, in people who form opinions based off what somebody else has to say or some blog that they read. read right. Right? So why do, you, why do you think we are like that, and what do we do about it? Yeah, you know, it, it saddened me the other day. On my phone, I was typing in Tulsa Real Estate Fund. And for those who don't know, Tulsa Real Estate Fund is the first black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America. A fund we founded that uh, we'll be acquiring on our first commercial property next uh, week, 30,000 yes. square feet right here in East Point, uh, outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And a fund that has over 12,000 partners where everyone invests together and we have this pool of dollars that we're, gonna, we're, we're investing into the community. The fund has committed no offenses, no compliance issues. It's an SEC regulated fund. It's a regular state tier two crowd fund. Right, all legit, all transparent. And I was typing in Tulsa Real Estate Fund on my phone the other day, and what popped up on Google was Tulsa Real Estate Fund scam. And it's been mm. these people out there who have said, this is a scam. Now, there's no evidence or there's no actions of that, but in, in theory, they can't conceptualize it. They feel there's something, whatever that is. And it saddened me that, and when you say, why so, I, I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm still dissecting that. Um, part of my theory, one, we've been duped so many times by so many people that it's hard to feel like somebody's really that real and really that legit. Mm -hmm. um, anyone that has said negative things about me or our organizations, I bet you 99 out of 100 times, they never interact interacted with me personally. Mm -hmm. This is all how you feel from a social media perspective. Because if you ever sat with me, shook my hand, hugged me, dat me, you would, understand, you would feel the energy and the love that I have for our people. You would feel my realness and my integrity. If you can't feel me, you're not real to me, <laughs> right? Right, right? But um, I think a lot of it also has to do with classism. And in our community, we've had this divide between, ever since our enslavement days, between the field Negro and the house Negro, between the, 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 the working class Negro and the bourgeoisie, talented 10th educated Negro. Mm -hmm. And it's always been this clash between, right? And so. If you look at me on paper, although I have business accomplishments, the Jay Morrison Academy just made the Inc. 500. Wow. Number 588, Rats. fastest growing companies in the country. Wow. You know, Tulsa Fund, historical company, et cetera. But if you look at my educational resume, I don't have any PhDs, any MBAs, no college credits. And so a lot of the bourgeoisie educated class who just are so caught up in that, mm -hmm. they cannot, it's hard for him to conceptualize that a field Negro has elevated himself and is elevating others, but doesn't have their standard qualifications. He doesn't belong up here with us in this class. Like, what qualifies me to run a multi-million dollar real estate? This is literally what they asked me. What qualifies you to run a multi-million dollar real estate fund? So these, you know, those are the questions I get. I said, what qualifies me is the fact that I did it. Right. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> that's Yo, that's qualifies. crazy. And you know what? And it's a much smaller case, but the same people. First off, it takes a lot of energy to research you, research the whole fund, just try to find any holes in it, put a blog together, make a video. That takes time. Mad time. 
why not just put that time into something productive and be in your own lane, which is crazy to me. They justify it as productive because what they, what they say and what they tell themselves in their weird mind is that I'm looking out for the people. I'm, I'm, I'm critiquing, I'm poking holes because I'm looking out for the people. But the same people you say you're looking out for and that you care about and that you love, um, I'm one of those people. And what happened to looking out for, for me in our best interest or reaching out to me saying, hey, here's some things I kind of see, you know, can you explain these to me further? Here's what I don't understand. But the same people who are critiquing and the sad part is the average person, you know, they follow leaders. Like I ran to a guy, right? He was taking off some trash, trash job. He said, oh, you're Jay Morrison. He said, man, I love what you're doing. I love the fun. He said, you know, I saw somebody commenting on it and I respect them for their opinion too. And I kind of don't know who to believe. And I said, King, that's, you have to look at their resume. <laughs> and sure. the same people that are critiquing, you have to ask, what have they done significant or substantial? When have they been on the front line for you or with yeah. you? What have they created from a business standpoint? It's very easy to blog. It's very easy to commentate. Very difficult to execute. Yeah, and I, I think it, it, it's a part of a, a wave of popularity because there are big companies that are really taking advantage. If you have an iPhone, you know when a new iPhone comes out, your iPhone's about to stop messing up. It's going to start messing up My all day long. so <laughs> janky. Every time. Look, they're going to change the jack. No, the jack been the same jack going in a headphone for years. They change it up, nobody says anything. Or let's say, um, you know, uh, I don't know, Black Panther or, you know, a, a black-owned movie. People feel comfortable streaming it for free or buying a bootleg. Right. But when somebody's trying to do something, they take so much energy. It's the same person. And that's a smaller scale, but I think that just speaks to the integrity of the person. You might work for a black-owned business, but you come in late and still try to get paid for it. You leave yep. early, still try to get paid. For it. You stealing, right? Stealing. But <laughs> but they look at you like, oh my gosh, he's trying to do something historic. We gotta stop him. We gotta stop we gotta, him. We gotta, we he seems right. Him. Yeah, you know what? Because it's like, oh man, if he pulls this off, it's like it's like it's like I don't know, man. It's 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 it's, it's really a it's a self reflection of them. Like oh, I said, sure. Sure. Is your is your is your envy is your pride is your ego is your jealousy is your is your whatever now, especially when you're going off something of off theory, mm -hmm. not like a, hey, you know, this was a purchase right or this was you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. you have some real substance to go off of, right. but you ain't even give me a shot like <laughs> God damn like. You, we, we, we're only 90 days old, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, you, you ain't even give us let us make our first purchase yet, right. you know what I'm saying? You're just like, oh, no, 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 right. no. And what happened to giving each other the benefit of the doubt? And as your point, you have all these other companies, these banks, these institutions that, mm. that, that, that rape us, that, oh. <laughs> that, that take advantage and exploit us all the time. Um, but here's your brother making, making history. Um, but that comes with the territory. And, yeah. and I, I take it, you know, I'm passionate about it, so I do speak out on it sometimes. My followers and supporters hate it. They're like, man, don't even get that negative, no, no attention. You know, we riding with you. Right. But you know, I, I'm a human being, and yeah. you know, we poured four years of research and development into creating the, the the first fund of its kind, and we had a successful raise over ten million dollars in one week of, of, mm. of capital commitments. And you know, it, it is. And this, I think the saddest part is this: that all the negative comments on the first black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America are all from black people. Oh, man. I would have expected the white, I would have the white supremacist. <laughs> I could have dealt with the white supremacist being right. like, like, but all black people? Crazy. Let me ask you, what's the difference between someone investing into Tulsa Real Estate Fund or investing in a stock and they don't know how it's going to go up or down? What's the difference? Oh, uh, I mean, very little difference in essence. I mean, no investment for that matter, is guaranteed, right. right? So we don't guarantee an investment. We do give folks a, you know, you can buy 10 shares of our company for $500. So our minimum investment is $500. You get an 8% preferred return, meaning before we make any back-end profits, you get 8% first. Mm. And our investors get their prorated share of 50% of the profits. Right. So as fund managers, we get a 5.5% management fee, and we get 50% of the profits. Our crowd investors get 8% preferred return, and the other 50% of the profits. Mm -hmm. um, in a stock, you're gonna get your share and proration of whatever that stock right. increases in equity. You may get a dividend if it's a dividend offered within that stock. Mm -hmm. And you're at the mercy of the company and their performance. Right. 
I mean, it's very uh, unique in that way. Um, it just seems it just seems weird. So I, I invested in a stock, and the guy told me before he took my money, he said, "If you need this money, don't invest." Mm -hmm. He's don't like, "Yo, your last. yeah, don't don't invest money you can't afford to lose." I'm like, "All right, cool." Um, and I, I look at this it, the same way, like with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Like, if you're gonna put some money into it, it's an investment, just like any other investment. And I lost money on that investment, but I didn't not write a Tulsa. blog about it. No, no, not Tulsa, not okay, Tulsa, okay, not Tulsa. Sure. All right, cool. <laughs> I, lo I lost money on that stock because it seemed like a good stock tip. I'm, well, I'm still losing money on it, but I didn't write a blog about it. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to change the mindset of the people. Like, it's an investment, but it's financial maturity though, because you're not backed by like some big corporation. If you were doing this under the umbrella of Apple, oh, oh. give me no problem. No problem. Oh, oh, the good folks at Apple? Oh, <laughs> man, no problem. They have no, we could lose $40 million, uh, but oh, it was Apple, it was worth a shot. Right. <laughs> it was the good folks at Apple. Oh, my people? Oh, black man trying, you know what I'm saying, trying to do it? Oh, man, you better not lose nothing. Right. Yo, that, and that, that, that just, that's mind boggling. What do we do about it? Um, what do we do? You know, it's repetition marketing. Mm. And I don't mean from a brand marketing standpoint, I'm talking about repetition community marketing. The self-hate was rep repeatedly, literally beating us. Mm -hmm. And it's what we've seen. Um, so what we do is we try to lead by example, galvanize ourselves, love on ourselves, unify ourselves, because it's, really it's really an internal issue. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 how, it's like why, like you said, Folks can go work for a, 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 an Asian man or woman or European man or woman or whatever the case is, and hey, okay, boss, that's my boss, that's my boss. They come work for you or I, mm -hmm. talking about a black person, mm -hmm. they struggle with calling you boss. Mm. Why can't you see, you know, why can't we see you as a boss and not feel any kind of way, but see someone your exact same age, exact same pedigree, but of a different nationality, have no problem calling them boss. Mm. But People have a trouble seeing their peers excel, or who they see as their peers. So we as Africans in America, we sometimes get very itchy and, and, and feel some kind of way when we see someone we see as a peer or someone that is within our demographic start to excel. And some of us support them and edify and uplift them. Can we see the value in that? And some of us just like, mm-mm, we gotta drop a dime on them. Mm -mm. <laughs> that, 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 that's, the illest, that's the illest Negro in Nebraska. I don't like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> someone, someone's got the face like this. Mm -mm. I don't like that. Oh, oh, he just raised twelve million. Mm -mm. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dave launched a new podcast over here. Mm -mm. So, so what, what do we do about it? What, what do we do? Like, do about what, what do you right. think we can do? And for the people that are watching this right now, how can they be a part of solving this problem? Yeah, I, I, I really believe, um, you know. For me, it starts with self-love and, and, and community love. And uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it best. He said, we have to love our people greater than they, than they hate themselves. Mm -hmm. And it takes some patience and it's some repair work. It's why we go out to the corners and for the last three years and held over 50 corner classes. Mm -hmm. It takes engagement. It takes relationship building, right? It takes these kind of showing. It, it really is, is examples. It's the exposure. It's the exposure to camaraderie. It's, show, you know, it's, it's elevating each other. You know, we have a thing we do within our company and within our culture and my supporters, you know, we, we call each other kings and queens. It's constant elevation because there's a, Malcolm X said, we suffer from, so, from social degradation. We degrade ourselves mm -hmm. socially. And so we have to intentionally socially elevate ourselves. So even those who are well, my biggest, uh, whatever you call them, detractors or haters or whatever out there, I still call them kings and queens. I still love them. Yeah. I still, so, and I think that, that love and that light is the only thing that will get us past, like we have to, it, it, it's a salesman's job. We have to get our community to buy in that, you know what, there are genuine people out there that aren't looking to get over on me. They're really willing to fight for us. They're not looking for the collection plate to go buy the big jets and leave the congregation broke. They're, you know what I mean? Like, we have, a, a, as leaders and as visionaries, we have an immense job of um, re-educating our community and doing that by how we lead by example and by innovative platforms, obviously leveraging social media and digital content, 
but also grassroots efforts and just collaborating more. I love to collaborate with you more on the curriculum and the education. Sure. We have some curriculum, so like that's the whole thing. Like, let's collaborate and see how we can further advance and, and, and starting with our youth too, changing their mindset. Because trying sure. to change some of these old fools. It's over. It's, it's over for some of them. <laughs> right. Some still got some hope, but some right. of y'all, y'all just brainwashed. We can't do nothing with you. But right. starting with our youth and showing them that, you know, there are different reflections of themselves, people that genuinely care, that genuinely love them. And, you know, so that's just something that I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to continue to be me mm-hmm. and um, you know, continue to sow seeds and pour into our people. I love it. I got two more, uh, two more questions. Sure. One, I need to dig into the mind of Mr. Jay Morrison. Okay. I was driving. Uh, I was getting off an exit. And I seen this guy I was going to work. And I seen this guy. He's homeless, right? Asking for money. And he had his sign. Uh, I think I might have gave him a dollar or something. You know, whatever I had. And I left. The next day I was going to work. I seen the same guy there. And I mean, literally, every single day I go to work, I see him there. And I'm thinking to myself, my man is prompt. He's here. He's consistent mm-hmm. on the corner, um, asking for money. But I'm like, yo, why? I wonder. I wonder if he has like a plan on how to not be here anymore. So say you, Jay Morrison, you're down to absolutely nothing. No oh, yeah. friends, no family, gotcha. nothing. What do you do? All right, so I call it my garbage man story, right? So if I'm down, everything's gone. Nothing. I'm, I'm, you got I'm, the clothes on your back. I'm, I'm strapped. Everything's gone. Um, you're right. It starts with a plan, right? And so one, I'm looking at how can I get my basic necessities, you know, food, shelter, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So that means if I go to a, to, to a homeless shelter, I'm looking for programming, I'm looking for opportunities, and then I want to take that energy and I want to be able to get myself in a position to at least get a job, mm-hmm. right? So I can get just the basics and some momentum and some cash flow. So what, is, what does that work, what does that look like from, okay, I got to get the momentum, I got to get a job. And I, I run this workshop with kids mm-hmm. to just kind of open up their mind. Like, yo, how do you go from homeless to having something? So gotcha. what does that grind look like? Okay, that grind looks like first, f- for me, I got to invest into my perception. Mm. Because if people see me as a bum, they see me as homeless, I'm not going to have much opportunity for acceleration. Oh, invest in your perception. That's a grammable quote, okay? Yo, listen, if y'all put that on Instagram, make sure y'all tag Jay Morrison. Go ahead. Yeah, please. <laughs> So like, I'm going to make sure my hair is cut, right? I'm going to make sure I got a teeth cleaning or the best brush I can get on my teeth. I'm going to make sure I smell good and got the cleanest outfit I can have on because that's going to give me the best shot to having any legitimate conversation for a job opportunity, grant opportunity, whatever opportunity. I need that perception of how you see me to be. So that's my first thing. I'm going to a Goodwill <laughs> shelter, what jeans, what, what slacks fit me, what button-ups you guys got, what hand-me-downs, right? And I wanna, I'm going to invest my perception first mm-hmm. yeah. because... With that, I can get you to take me seriously, but if I got rags on, I'm stinking, and my hair's all, you know, right, right now I'm actually growing my hair out the whole month to my birthday. I'm growing everything out, but anyway. Uh, when's your birthday? October 30th. Oh, okay. I yeah, will. so I'm a little scruffier than I usually am, but this is, you know, again, perception, right? I believe right. in perception. So now I invested in that perception. Now I could get a little favor, right? Because like, I, I even tell children in school, even your verbal perception. If someone asks you how you're doing and you say, I'm good, I'm all right, chilling, I'm going to look at you as a certain kind of way. Mm-hmm. But if you say, hey, Jay, how you doing? I say, I'm well, thank you. And you? You're going to look at me a different kind of way. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to, me being Jay Morrison, I'm going to talk that talk. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have that posture. I'm going to invest into my perception first and foremost. And I know with that, I can be able to talk my, my way into an opportunity. Right? By being able to get me maybe a job opportunity or a grant opportunity or work at a nonprofit or whatever that looks like. I'm going to work my way into that. And then from there, I'm going to look to get stable. And then I'm, I'm instantly thinking about, and this is, this is me knowing what I know, I'm instantly taking that perception. I may get a job or some kind of gig. And probably, honestly, me being me, I'm trying to kind of teach them. I probably wouldn't even get a job. Mm-hmm. Me being me, if I fell off, I'm instantly putting my best on, my best fit, mm-hmm. the best one I can find, scrub up or buy, get my best haircut. Mm-hmm. And I'm instantly going to create a partnership or syndication on a deal somewhere. Because I know too much. Mm-hmm. I'm instantly going to holler. I'm going to a RIA. I'm going to a wholesale meeting. I'm going to a real estate office. I'm going to somewhere with entrepreneurs or people who are looking to invest are. And I'm going to leverage my expertise. Like, I know that. I can't say I know I will never fall off. But I know I'll never stay off because I know too much. Mm. See, because, I'm a, because I may be a bum or broke, 
I understand how to evaluate a deal. What I also understand is that everyone who has money, if I have no money, they're all trying to look at what's the best place I can park my money to make me greater returns than where my money is currently at. Mm -hmm. So if I can go out and evaluate an opportunity or deal, even though I have nothing but an outfit, mm -hmm. but I can show you how to get a 16% return on your 401k, IRA, pension, savings account, CD, or whatever you got. If I can show you how to make 16% as opposed to 3%, can we split that 13% difference? Mm. And all this stuff is on YouTube, right? My YouTube or the Jay Morrison Academy. So we give you some game on YouTube, but my realist trainings, my philosophies and ideologies are taught in my school. Mm. I make you invest a minimal amount into yourself for you to be able to understand how to position yourself and have the not see, I believe like the knowledge base, whether that's wholesaling a deal, syndicating a deal, raising capital, uh, understanding credit and leverage. Again, this is me, I'm broke, I'm a bum, put on my best fit, I'm going to a family member, if my credit ain't good, I'm talking about, yo, who can be a credit partner? I got a great opportunity. We can leverage your credit to get unsecured funding, get 50 grand of funding, with that 50 grand of funding, we can go buy this $35,000 house, carrying costs 5,000, we all in 40,000, we can take that, flip that, all I want is 50% of the proceeds, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna use my knowledge base and leverage that to be my value in, in the equation. So I know if I fall off, my value is my expertise, which is not going anywhere, mm -hmm. and my experience. So even if Jay Marston were broken a bum, as long as I got a good fit and presentation and you don't feel I fell all the way off, there's tens of thousands of people that would love to partner with me and give me equity in their companies or their deals based on my knowledge and my experience. Wow. And I'm back on. There's so many people who have excuses. Like, they got a comfortable job. And maybe, maybe some of y'all need to be homeless. So, like, your back is against the wall. <laughs> Because, like, you're comfortable. I was talking to one of my managers. She said uh, she just had a baby, and I was asking her, you know, how's being a mother? I was like, are you going to have another one? She was like, nah, I don't get a chance to spend the time with the baby that I have, like my newborn. And I was like, well, you ever started, instantly I go to entrepreneurship. You ever started to, you know, think of a side business where you can work from home? She's like, I, I make good money, and my husband makes good money. I'm like, yo, you don't make enough, you make too much money to spend time with your kid. Mm -mm -mm. Ain't that crazy? So what happens when one of those good jobs that you're making is good money, what happens when one goes bankrupt or moves or relocates or gives you a pink slip? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's great you're making good money. So now how can you put that money to work for you in a way that you can free up more time and have that money making more money for you, whether that be in real estate, whether that be in stocks and finance, whether that be in cryptos, whether that be in entrepreneurship, right? Or any of those strategies. And I think, like you said, too many people get comfortable. Um, and even as simple as, okay, you're making all that good money, go buy a four family house. Mm -hmm. Hire a property manager. You don't gotta be the landlord, just be mm -hmm. the owner. Right. And let that house give you cash flow, equity, appreciation, tax advantages. You could write the uh, maintenance off, the uh, interest on the mortgage off, the capital depreciation of the tangible assets, write all that off from your earned income. <laughs> now you're paying the IRS less, retaining more income, Talk to while him, you're Jay. gaining depreciation and gaining equity. Why not do that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, you know, the opportunity cost of, you know, of your time. And I think if, if people, the problem is you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's why the financial education is so important. So many of us are so smart, but you're not economically smart. Mm -hmm. You're not financially smart. Like you don't understand how to find an ROI, a purchase ratio, a cap rate, an ARV, a LTV. You have no idea what the hell I'm talking about right now. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a finance, it's like, if you don't have a financial education or entrepreneurial education, you're forced to be a worker. Mm -hmm. You have no other options. Mm -hmm. And that's the education that they intentionally didn't give you in school. They'd rather taught you how to dissect a frog, world history, <laughs> and trigonometry than tell you how you can own your own home and right. why you should. Mm. Unbelievable. Yo, I literally, I could probably sit here and talk to you all day. This could be like a four-hour interview, right? <laughs> I, know, I know you got a bunch going on. I just got Appreciate one last you. question, sure. man. Um, I like to make predictions on this, uh, this, this podcast. I want to know where you're going to be in five years so that I can look back at this interview and say, yo, Jay said he was going to do that. Yo, I got the footage. Jay said My he was man. going to do this five years ago. So where are you going to be? You can give me, you can be five to 10. All right. 
Give me a prediction. All right, next five to ten. Next five to ten years, um, two things. I'll give you two. Next five to ten years. So one is there's a social component I'm working on and have been working on for years, not as aggressively, but it will pick up over the years, is legalizing our nationality as African-Americans, what I call African-Americans, or Africans in America, excuse me. Explain it. Explain okay. It. Supreme Court and World Court does not acknowledge African-Americans as legitimate nationality. Mm. So this is part of the reason why we haven't been able to get reparations or repair or any kind of uh, uh, retribution, if you will, for our prior mm. enslavement, Jim Crow, and, and human rights violations that were committed against our people and our ancestors is because we're literally not a nationality. So wow. there is a path to legal nationality that um, we can obtain as African Americans so that we can have the same rights and privileges as other Americans. Mm -hmm. So you look at Korean, you know, Korean Americans, Chinese Americans, Russian Americans, Italian Americans, Greek Americans, they all have a legitimate nationality and a legitimate nation backing them. We don't have that, which is why we constantly oh. face a lot of the systematic oppression that we face. So there's a path to nationality that I'm working with some social groups on where we can have our own flag, our own nationality, our own seat at the world court to be able to bring to the table our grievances and our issues for our community. So that's a social one. In the next five years, yeah, I so believe- big. You're so big. Like you, like you see so big, like, <laughs> what? Like, where do you? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm inspired. Yeah, so that, that's one. And then two, um, so right now the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, it maxes out at 50 million, uh, each Regulation A Tier 2 fund. So one of our goals is to at least, uh, if not, whether it be Reg A funds, Reg D funds, however, but our, our goal is to at least have $1 billion of assets under management in the next five to 10 years. Wow. $1 billion of assets under management. You're going to have it. Yeah. You're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, well, look, man, please tell people where to find you. Um, please let people know about Jay Morrison Academy. Yeah. Um, show. All that. So, yeah, so, you know, I want to say to your audience, we're going to do something special for your audience today. Okay. Right? So, for those who are following, if, and we got to do more of this. Oh, I'm, I yeah. enjoy it. I, I enjoy got, it. I got a million more questions, right? All right. All right. You know what? We're going to go three more bonus questions after <laughs> this. Three more bonus questions. Let's get it. Let's do it. Outwork the work. So, um, no, for those who really want to listen, I can give you example after example and testimony after testimonial of students who've taken it. What I've learned is this. Financial education especially is ongoing. Too many of us stop at podcasts, YouTube, and Instagram videos and don't take this information super serious. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why our bank accounts reflect, reflect the way they reflect. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I'm able to launch a real estate fund or syndicate millions in deals or run a Inc. 500 company or whatever the case is, is because of all these gems that I've soaked up over the last 13 years and my 10 years prior, all the intangible skills that I learned and I dumped all that back into my school, the Jay Morrison Academy. Mm -hmm. And when, if you take my blueprint serious, what my blueprint about, it's, it, we do teach business branding and formation, wholesaling real estate, creative financing on deals, negotiating deals, evaluating and analyzing commercial deals, residential deals, flips, all that. We teach stocks and finance from an overview standpoint, credit mastery, how to build your personal credit, your family credit, your children's credit, how to build business credit, how to leverage that credit for unsecured and uncollateralized funding. But outside all the tricky words, the point I want you to understand is that all that is just general knowledge and, and education. It's like knowing mad rap songs. Mm -hmm. It's like knowing a bunch of Jay-Z lyrics. Right. You can always sing along to the song because right. you memorize the lyrics. Right. If you embrace and embody all these financial strategies, you could always sing along to the song. I love it. So I I'm love always it. able to get a bag, always able to execute a deal. You and I can go bust a move right now today mm -hmm. because of our knowledge base. And you know what I mean? So I want to encourage you guys to beef up your knowledge base. And so we have a wealth mastery program. I'm going to encourage you to join and give everyone a scholarship from David Dang. to join, right? So if you go to jmorrisonacademy.com, we have a wealth mastery program. It's six courses. Over 12 months, you'll get weekly mentorship calls, the archive of four years of calls before you. So you can listen to all the student calls for four years and learn from other students' experiences. Be a part of our student community, 
learn credit mastery, residential real estate, commercial real estate, business mastery, self mastery, and stocks and finance, right? That course is 1497 for the year of mentorship, $1,497. But if you put in a promo code David, just type in David on the promo code, you'll get 20% uh, scholarship on that 1497 course as a one time payment. If you do that one time tuition payment, you get access to everything right away, locked in for 12 months of mentorship. If 1497 is not in your budget right now, you can also get the course, I think it's for 149 a month, $5 a day, but we'll give you 20% on that 149 too. So now it's like 120 I got for the back. month. I got you. Promo code David, 20% off our monthly tuition or yearly tuition to the Wealth Mastery Program, which is just not lectures. It's our mentorship calls, it's our student community, it's our textbook, it's our resources, it's our relationships. And so I wanna encourage everyone to go to jmorrisonacademy.com, go to our Wealth Mastery Program. When you check out, put in David for the scholarship of 20% off the monthly tuition or the yearly tuition. If you pay monthly, you get your lessons monthly. I can't give you everything up front, I don't know you like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you pay for the year, everything's unlocked for the year. But that's one opportunity. We also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and strategy for those who may be more advanced and want to learn how to build their portfolio or scale their portfolio. Right. Holler at me and the team about one-on-one -on -one coaching at jmorrisacademy.com as well. And so, you know, that's just one way you guys can learn. I'm telling you, we know it. We got it. Yes, sir. You know, we know it. And so you guys got to buy in. Um, there's other courses as well. You guys can check out. Call my team uh, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 1-844-JOIN-JMA. And invest with us through Tulsa. TulsaRealEstateFund.com invest $500 to be a shareholder, equity owner, and partner in the fund. It's not a GoFundMe, not a collection plate. We're talking about equity and ownership. In every asset we buy, you will be a shareholder and partner. So I those are some it. ways you guys can get me. And obviously, I'm on the gram and all social media, YouTube included, Facebook fan page, Mr. J. Morrison. So I love it. I that's love my closeout. But I want a couple more questions. Oh, I got, got I got Talk to me. So there's... There's somebody right now, they got $1,000. Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out what to do with it. They want to get into real estate. Gotcha. How, what are some steps they can get into real estate with $1,000? $1,000, okay. $1,000. That's all that their wife going to let them take out. That's all their husband going to let them invest. $1,000 in real estate. What do all we right. do? I'm going I'm, I'm to commit to three ways. One, we just gave you. Out of that $1,000, you can invest $500 on Tulsa Real Estate Fund. And literally, when we close you'll be a commercial real estate owner mm -hmm. that fast. You can literally say, honey, we own real estate. I love it. We own a commercial building. We own an apartment complex. Whatever we acquire, you're a partner in, you're an owner in. So that's one passive way to invest in real estate mm -hmm. right there. Two, you have $1,000. I would um, invest $149 into our Wealth Mastery Program or $120, which is which your David discount, all day. To 120 of that thousand to start getting training on how do I build this business? How do I build this business? Which makes sense too, because Jay said if he was on the corner homeless, he has enough up here that the current situation won't last long. Listen, we don't. You don't got a money problem. I swear to you, right hand to God, nobody has a money problem, mm -hmm. nor do they have a credit problem. They have a strategy problem. All day. That's I'm telling you. That's your problem. It's not money, it's not credit, mm -hmm. it's strategy. With the strategy, you can always get to the money, get to the credit, get to the credit, to leverage it to get to the money, mm -hmm. leverage the money to get to the deal, right. get to the deal <laughs> to get to some more money. You just don't know how to facilitate any of those things or right. how to speak a lingo or hold a professional conversation or an investment conversation with someone where they feel comfortable enough doing business with you. Mm -hmm. So think about it, if you had the training Say you flat broke, mm -hmm. right? You're not a bum broke, but you're flat broke, right? Right. But you had the knowledge base, you had the training. You could go to your uncle or aunt who has 70 grand in a 401k mm -hmm. of an old company they used to work for, sitting 70 grand, get 3% a year, mm -hmm. which is 2,100 a year. Mm -hmm. And you can go to your uncle or aunt and say, hey, auntie, um, that 401k can you 3%, that's 2,100 a year. If I could get you a pretty safe opportunity to invest in a piece of real estate that gets you 4,800 a year, would you partner with me? Mm -hmm. Then you can say, auntie, look how it works. For that same 70,000, well, we don't even need all of it. We could buy this $100,000 two family 
in Milwaukee, Detroit, here in Atlanta, or say a $200,000 home. We can put 20% down on this $200,000 home, $40,000. We'd owe the bank 160, our mortgage only be about a thousand bucks. And we can rent this two family home out for 1,800 a month. Mm -hmm. We get $800 a month profit, 800 times 12, $9,600. And that beats the 2,100 you were just getting. Mm -hmm. But now if you knew how to buy that home or send out direct mail or bandit signs or postcards or leverage a network to buy that $200,000 home, but buy it where it has equity in it. Mm -hmm. So you're buying it for 200,000, but it's really worth 240 or 260. Right. Hey, auntie, we just bought this $200,000 home for 20% down, 40,000 out of your 401k. That 40,000 was only getting you 1,200 for the year mm -hmm. at 3% interest. So if we get this multifamily home and we buy it for 200,000, but it's worth 220, 240, 260 the day we bought it. I just increased your net worth by $60,000 of the same money you had in your 401k. <laughs> And we bought it at a 65% purchase ratio at a 80% LTV. And honestly, I'm gonna make this sense to you right now. <laughs> you gotta stop it all with that. Yo, is this making sense? Makes sense. So Makes sense. It's opportunity cost of money. Right. So no matter, everyone has money parked somewhere, but can you have an intelligent conversation with them that lets them know I know what I'm talking about? You can have confidence investing in me. I thought through the whole equation. I counted what the cost would be to sell a property with 6% uh, realtor costs. I thought through the carrying costs. I thought through the management, the back taxes, got title insurance, homeowners insurance. I made sure that we covered all the I, you know what I'm saying? Look, so if you can have that conversation, you can always keep a bag coming. Right. But you can't do that trying to piecemeal it together from minute Instagram clips. I love it. <laughs> get the training, get the mentorship. It really works. Yo, makes perfect sense. If you have a thousand, invest a good portion of it up here. Because if not, you're gonna invest a thousand and lose. Oh, you're anyway. gonna you're gonna you're gonna lose tens. You're gonna lose tens of thousands <laughs> trying to figure it out yourself. Now, for those who know a little something, I would take that thousand uh, honestly. And again, it's all about deal sourcing. Mm. Um, I keep five hundred of that thousand to put down as an earnest money deposit on a property. If I saw one I liked, I put a five hundred dollar deposit on it, get the contract to it. And then I'd assign or sell that contract with somebody else for three to five or 10 grand and right. flip my 500 deposit into some more money because I was able to evaluate a deal. The other 500, I would put in the gas money, making sure I smell good, look good. And I can get to some meetings to make sure I can get the deals and leads or I invest into marketing for the leads. Strategy problem. Strategy problem. And I think some people know like that, that grandma or auntie who have that money but they haven't thought through a strategy. So they might go up like, hey, you want to invest in some real estate? Take that 401k, let's just put it in some real estate. Right, They're but like, they don't even what? know how to transfer the 401k to a self-directed right. IRA to a checkbook <laughs> LLC to put it into the real estate. Right. So you can take the little bit I just gave you and try to do it, it ain't right. gonna work. You don't know enough. <laughs> you don't know enough yet. Stop trying to cheat the right. system. <laughs> You're not gonna get 13 years of expertise in 13 minutes. Right. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Oh, or you could take the auntie that don't even got a 401k but got a 760 credit score because many of y'all got a good credit score but you hold the on to your credit score because you want to die with a good credit score but you broke as hell. <laughs> you're worried about a 760 or 800 score but you ain't got $800 in the bank account. Mm -hmm. But you're going to leverage that credit to get 100% financing or use business lines of credit or multiple ways for you to also facilitate a deal. You're either credit rich, you're asset rich, you're cash rich or you're equity rich. You might own a home right now, but have equity in your home, but can't figure out how to tap into that equity to execute it into a deal. Or understand you can refinance or get a home equity line of credit to tap into your equity, but you don't know what to do with the money once you get the equity to even invest, because you don't know how to invest. It's still a strategy problem. This is what I'm gonna ask y'all to do, because I know y'all just got that big package, the NBA package or NFL package, that's like $200 a month, okay? I need you to just like get rid of that, invest 125, because now, People have these type of conversations about sports. All that I'm talking about, they'll tell you the stats of Larry Bird yeah. in the 80s. I just said that in Detroit. I'm like, yo, y'all could, like, could tell me the Lions scored. They're like, yeah, Lions scored zero points last game. I'm like, all right, somebody tell me how you find the ROI. <laughs> a room of 100 people. Somebody tell me the formula to find the ROI. Well. Crickets. <laughs> Profit yeah. and divided by investment. You can't tell me how to find the per oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The return on investment ratio, but you know all the sports stats. All but up. you're mad that you're broke. 
I, listen, I, the I, problem. I need y'all to make a commitment. Listen, if you Rough guys are on, program. if you guys are on live right now, I just need, I just need y'all to comment. Uh, I'm getting rid of my package right now. <laughs> I'm getting rid of my package right now. Okay? I need y'all to comment right now. That's right. Use the promo code David. Go to jmorrisonacademy.com. We have a wealth mastery program, 20% scholarship. Type in David. Got it. That's for the 12 months of mentorship. If you can't do that, we have a $99 a month beginners program. No discount on it, but you guys can buy into that or one on one, whatever. I don't even care how you get in. You ain't even got to say you ain't even got to learn from me. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just telling you what your problem is. Right. Like, there's no self interest involved. People are like, right. oh, I don't even need to push my program. I think that we teach it well. I think that we offer great mentorship. But uh, you don't need have, their $100. I don't, bro, I'm all right. <laughs> I got, I'm just telling you that if you want to learn it in a trans, trans, translatable way, in a relatable mm. way, I think that we break down complex subject matter in a relatable way, and you can understand it. If you feel like, hey, there's, there's somebody, I don't care. The point is, people don't have to be broke, they don't have to be time, uh, have time constraints, you can have financial freedom and flexibility and lifestyle freedom, mm -hmm. you just have to learn more about money. Mm -hmm. I love it. I and love it. The opportunity to earn. And you know I mean? so, so yeah, I'm, you know. So I got, I got a question because um, I think we all struggle with something. Like, and uh, I think a part of mastery is just continuing to grow. So, Jay Morrison, what is your struggle? What do you struggle with? Oh, uh, because I think people like feel like if someone cuts you, you don't bleed, right? <laughs> like you're not human, right? We all got some growing to do. All human. So, so yeah. what, is, what is it that you're, you're struggling with that you're trying to improve on? You, you know something that I have not, and I say it all the time, and I've said it for over a year and a half, and I still haven't done it, and I'm, I, I don't read enough. I have, I've completed one book That's in the last the two I'm years. I'm sorry, the way you just gave that whole little situation, it's you don't crazy. read enough. This is what I'm trying to say, like, I know a lot, I've embodied a lot, I'm disappointed in myself as someone who's an expert and an influencer and, you know, successful in some right. I literally have only read one book. It's my brother's book. It's called Overachieve. It's a really good read, self-development book by Arthur, Arthur Morrison. Called, oh, no, Overcome, excuse me. Overcome. That's the only book I've read in the last two, maybe two and a half years. Really? I mean, I've read a couple chapters. I put it down. A couple I have not read a complete book. And, and that's sad because mm. I could imagine how smart I would have been if I'd have read a book a month, a book a quarter, right. a, a book a year. Right. And so I know I've short, even though I've done some amazing things, I've shortchanged myself. Mm. But not, I don't pour into myself enough. Yeah. I don't have enough mentors. I'm so constantly focused on pouring into others, I don't take care of myself enough. And right. that's probably a major flaw, because I, I, I could be a better Jay Morrison right now. Right, right. I don't work out enough. I just had a whole back issue, and it wasn't because I lifted anything or I did anything. Literally it said, I just haven't been stretching enough, haven't been working out enough, and I have a lot of stress on me. Mm -hmm. And it really played out in a physical way. Yeah. And so I just don't take care of myself enough. And that's, you know, something that I have to, I got to work on. Yeah, I think that's dope, too, because uh, especially, I like to try to be transparent with, like, my issue, because that makes you human. You know what I'm saying? Like, people right. think, yo, you're just this machine, this machine, everything's perfect. No, he's just like y'all, okay? Like, you tell yourself you're going to go to the gym every day, he probably do the same thing, you just don't go. Right. <laughs> I'm going to get a trainer this week. Right. Yeah. I'm about to do 100 push-ups a day. My grandfather, 77 years old, does 100 push-ups a day. Really? So I'm like, yo, my grandfather can do 100 push-ups a day. I know I can. Right. I've been doing four days. And, and I was... So, yeah, exactly. So, uh, what, one more question, man. Um, I remember you were talking about how you left the game, like cold turkey, just left the game. Mm -hmm. And even in that game, you had a bunch of fans, you had a bunch of friends, you had a bunch of people that were probably eating off you. What was that pressure like internally, right? I mean, because I'm sure there was a bit of pride in that. Like, oh, yeah. yo, I can't. Ooh, like, I, what, was, what was that internal pressure like? Because I think it's some people that are in that situation now, and they really can't go to the next level. And they know they, they can, but there's so many people on that level that would be disappointed if they left. Absolutely. And we have to understand that there are sacrifices with all evolution, mm -hmm. right? And I've I had people like that, like, yo, bro, I want to lead a game, but like, yo, my whole team counting on me to eat. But it's like, if you put yourself at risk, what is your team going to do then? Mm -hmm. When you're doing 19 years yeah. or you're killed, right? One of the biggest, from a drug dealer perspective, and it could work in other industries as well, but I know from the streets anyway, so many people say, yo, I hustle, you know, a scam, I hustle, I commit crime, whatever it is. 
because I want to feed my family. Mm -hmm. And it's really the poorest excuse. Mm -hmm. Because you put yourself at risk. Who feeds your family when you're doing seven years? Right. Who feeds your family when you're doing 13 years or three years? So you're doing these things to feed your family, but it's also counterproductive with the risk you're taking, right? And right. so even in business, with the amount of responsibility we have with staff and others and, and just growing, um, what I found is in your growth, in your evolution, you can't please everybody. You have to stay true to yourself and you gotta be willing to make tough decisions, mm -hmm. right? Like even when it comes down to firing people, it's one of the toughest things to do as a CEO and as a boss is firing people, especially if you fire people you like. <laughs> and you, right, you know right. have a family. But you have to think about the bigger picture, right? The end result. And, I, and like you said, I think big. I've always dreamed big. I've always thought big. We had a four-hour team meeting today, and I was saying, like, before, like, everything you see me accomplish, it wasn't here before. I had to think about it and then walk into it and live it. And so in that process of, of making big things happen and materializing dreams and making things come into fruition, there are gonna be some tough choices and sacrifices, and I think too many of us think it's gonna be an easy road. Mm -hmm. And this time I had, to, I had to, my same brother who wrote that book, he worked in my company. At one point I had to let him go from my company. Mm. And I love him, he's my little brother. Right. But you have to look at, you just gotta be practical, you gotta be real, you have to, you know, I like to be spiritually aligned, and I follow my instincts. Like, does this make the best decision for my growth and where I want to go or not, right? I have this saying, and I'm done. It's called evaluate, eliminate, evolve, and execute, four E's. Evaluate the people, places, things around you. Evaluate yourself. Like I said, am I reading enough? Am I working out enough? Right. Am I doing this? Are you serious? Like, yeah, you want all day's podcasts and all this content and all that, but keep it real with yourself. In the mirror, are you really about that entrepreneur life? <laughs> like, be real with yourself. Right. So you evaluate yourself, and then you eliminate bad people, places, things, and habits. Mm -hmm. And then you evolve to a new and better you, and then you execute walking out that new you. And so mm -hmm. it goes for staff as well. You have to evaluate staff, evaluate your spending habits, evaluate, like, and you could be real, like, yo, I do want to be an entrepreneur, but man, I love the club. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> keep like, it real with man, yourself. Keep, keep it real with yourself. Right. Like, you have these habits, but a lot of these habits, or is that woman you're dating, is she productive or counterproductive to where you say you want to go and who you want to be? Or the five friends around you, they got day ones. Y'all was in the sandbox together. Right. But through those day ones, are they productive or conducive to who you say you want to be? And if they're not, you have to eliminate that time spent with them. You can keep a relationship, but a different kind of relationship if you are serious See, I'm serious about everything I say I want to do and where I want to go. That's the difference that separates me from the average person. Four years ago, I said I want to figure out a way where our community could pull dollars together in a sophisticated, civilized, and transparent way for us to raise capital to be able to acquire real estate, buy back the block, own land, and be a private equity partner for minority developer and investors throughout the country. But I was serious about it. I wasn't just talking Black Wall Street talk. I was, I'm, I'm for real. When I say I want to unify us, like, no, I mean for real. I want us all pledging to the red, black, and green flag like this. Mm. Unified. So whatever your big, hairy goals are, whatever you want to accomplish, you have to really ask yourself how serious you are and then be willing to make the elimination sacrifices and evolve to be everything you can be to make that goal in real life. So when I left the streets, like, I was all in. When I was in the streets, I was all in. Mm. When I left it, so, so, so it was everything I've done in life, I've been all in. Yeah. And if I'm, a, if I'm, a, if I'm my, my grandmother told me when I came home from prison, in the, year, in the year 1999, I served a year in prison in upstate New York, Rikers Island, upstate New York. And my grandmother, when I came home. Served a year in Rikers? Six months in Rikers and six months upstate. That's crazy. Rikers Island, C-74, Look, that's the whole upper. another pocket. Look, I got... All right, go ahead. Uh, go part ahead. two, part two when we come. We got like four more episodes of this. So, uh, so I come home from prison, and my grandmother called me in her room. I was staying in her house, and she said, I don't condone. My grandmother's, you know, deacon in a church, trustee, you know, all that. Grew up in a church, Baptist ministry, all that. She said, I don't condone what you were doing. She said, I'm going to tell you this. Whether you're selling drugs, she said, I don't care if you're a bum. If you're a bum, you better be the best bum there is. 
you selling drugs, whatever, you better be the best at whatever you do. And that's how I approach life. If I'm going to be that bum, if I lose everything, man, I'm going to be the best bum bumming it out this mother. <laughs> Get all the bums together. We're going to have a meeting. Right. We're going we 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 to organize this bum thing. Like, we're going to have a bum union out this month. And that's how I approach everything. Like, yo, if I'm going to do it, and I want to just project that energy to you all. If you're going to do it, go outwork the work. Go, go, go do that damn thing. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go hard at it, bro. I'm gonna go put it, put it all on the line. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go be the best, whatever that is that I can be, but not just in tongue and talk. I'm gonna need my my actions and my decisions and that those eliminations of those people and those places and those things to reflect that. It's easy to talk that hype. I'm gonna be the best, mm -hmm. but are how you live? Does it exude it? So that's, that's, that's something you guys got to challenge yourself with, man. Like, you want to be financially free? You want to be an entrepreneur? Then you shouldn't be spending so much time on Madden. You shouldn't be spending so much time playing a video game, so much time at the games. You shouldn't spend so much, so much time doing things that are not conducive to being the best entrepreneur you could be. You, people don't understand the level of sacrifices that, like, I don't get into all the, even traveling and vacations and all the luxuries. Like, my goal is not the... That's not my goal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I reward myself and I do things. not my point. My point is I don't get caught up in all the hype of success and because spending money is counterproductive to me making money. Right. 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 right? <laughs> spending money and spending time and leisure time is counterproductive to the time I need spent to build an empire. Mm -hmm. And so just make sure that you're real with yourself. And this is all in our self-mastery course in the Wealth Mastery Program, by the way. So we have so personal right. development, right? So, but just being real, that's what I love about you though. Everything I ever see from you or about you, even when I come here to your studio, it's like, you like, and hey, you got charges? Hell yeah, I got charges. Like, <laughs> and you got tripod? Hell yeah, I got tripods. Like, why wouldn't you? You all, all right. about content. Already, already. You serious about content. I got lapel mics, I got like, everything about you to speak the content. Mm -hmm. If you really about content. And so, you know, I just want to encourage all you all, again, um, our training, use the promo code DAVID for our Wealth Mastery Program at jmorrisacademy.com. Get mentored, get the training, but more importantly, adopt a lifestyle that speaks to who you say you really want to be. Stop fronting on yourself, because not only are you doing yourself a disservice, you're doing your last name a disservice. You're doing your legacy a disservice. Like, I need to make sure that the decisions I make are, cause I'm talking about legacy, and I want to create a, that's my thing. I'm chasing legacy. Right. I want my name to ring bells in the history books. Mm -hmm. I want my daughters and my daughter's daughters to be proud like Yo, my grandpa built something for us. But outside of just money, he built a name that we can be proud of. And so that's my thing. Mm -hmm. So everything I do, that's why you said, boy, you think big. It's because I'm thinking legacy. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking just dollars and financial freedom like that. That's somebody else's goal. Mm -hmm. My goal is not dollars and financial freedom. My goal is legacy and history books. Mm -hmm. What can I do so impactful in society that I give you all no choice but to name streets after me? <laughs> and I'll leave y'all with that. I, could, I don't know how to, you can't close it after that. The mic has been <laughs> dropped, man. Make sure y'all follow Jay Morrison. Enroll in the Jay Morrison Academy, man. Uh, invest in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Please follow this man. He is a sincere, sincere leader. Uh, one of the most genuine people I've ever met. And um, Thank this, you. this, this has uh, been, been by far the most inspirational uh, uh, interview for me that I've had. So I don't know if y'all got anything out of it, okay? But, like, I am, I'm on a whole other level, and we got to get out of here. I gotta get we got to build the part two coming. We, we got part oh, two coming. Oh, for sure. Oh, my yeah. man. Yo, follow him. <laughs>